Yep, that's Australia for you, mate. Even the trees are out to get us. I'm in my hothouse, the Scrap Palace, um, where I do a lot of propagation, but it's not really why I'm here today. Well, sort of in a way it is. I'm here collecting something a little bit weird. Admittedly, I've got my Mizuna seed I'm going to collect from here in a minute um, on this beautiful morning. It's 37 degrees in here already, but you know, not too bad in here. But on to the story. What am I here to collect? I'll just show you now a weird thing to cultivate, I know, but through the coming year, I want to show you how I make use of this unusual crop. So, this is what I'm talking about stinging nettle. I always look, grow stinging nettle as a seed crop somewhere in the garden, sometimes wild down the back if the conditions are right, but it um, hasn't been too much this year, a bit strangely enough, a bit too wet. But in the hothouse, just from the residual water dropping down, a variety of different things, it's going great guns in here. And as you can see, the seed is prolific from these plants. So I'm going to harvest this seed as this progressively dries and I'm going to do that by placing some cloth material around the base of the plant so as the seed falls it'll be collected there and it will dry naturally. I'll use this through the year as a tonic as a tonic to build up soil structure um, and you'd be amazed what it'll actually do. Okay let's harvest some Mizuna. I don't usually winnow seed that of plants that I'm not going to grow a huge amount of, but you can sort of see here that there's more than enough seed for what I need. So I'm going to gather up this seed. And the winnowing, put that away, ready for next year. Our paradise pear here is absolutely littered with fruit this year. It's really, really a nice surprise. It's been a bit light on recently. But the interesting thing about paradise pears, if you're not familiar with them, is that this is about as large as the fruit gets. They're a dessert pear and they get used in restaurants a lot. But um, fundamentally, they're a pollinator. They're used in uh, Packham groves, things like that, places where they want to get a lot of growth out of their other pears. And they can cross-pollinate other pears to normal size without a problem, but they're just beautiful and they're so sweet. And the one thing about them, which is really, really interesting, is the floral scent they have. It's truly unique. If you ever get a chance to try a paradise pear, give one a go. I was feeding the chooks yesterday morning when this branch came down from a sugar gum over here. It's a, um, a quite a large branch. I've already pulled a lot of stuff off, a lot of the foliage and lighter branches basically because I was trying to get through to see whether or not our mulberry had to survive the attack. Um, unfortunately, it's been snapped off there. Um, isn't really doing that well in amongst the actual head of the branch there. Nectarin nearby sort of survived and the um, I've got a seedling golden queen peach behind there which is doing okay as well. My little um, my corner bed here um, really took a hammering. Obviously I haven't used this bed for a little while. The reason for that was um, I had zucchinis in here a couple of years ago and on two occasions I've gone to pick um, fruit and there have been snakes on this bed. Um, one, actually, I almost grabbed because I thought it was zucchini in the half light. It's a pretty decent branch, so it's, it's come down and it hasn't quite broken off from the parent tree yet, but it won't take long. It's, it's completely split in the center. So this is another job. You have to get a, the saw out and 
start breaking this down but as I record this it's 37 degrees here and a couple more degrees to go before we get to the peak today so don't think it's something that I'm going to be getting done really anytime soon. Yeah I don't think I'll be um, cutting that tree up today <laughs> it's a bit too hot but it will be something that will be out of store. We'll make good use of it. I was actually watching some more Hugel culture videos today um, and really thought about the fact that I don't really have a great deal of material um, for Hugel culture beds. I've got a couple of um, metal beds that I've got down the back here that I'd really like to reuse in my re redevelopment of the back orchard, but it's going to take a little while, I think. Anyway, that's nature for you. And sadly, the eucalyptus in Australia it's a pretty common killer. It'll drop branches on you all the time. Yep, that's Australia for you, mate. Even the trees are out to get us. Oh, gee. What do you do? It's 38 degrees in South Australia. My brother and sister-in-law have purchased a property in the Adelaide Hills wine region and it's um, beautiful. It's got its own uh, mini orchard that's set up. It's got some, you know, uh, plums. Uh, it's got some beautiful kumquat trees there and it got a great little pomegranate um, and a lot of citrus. Um, it's also got some, and you can see the trees are really netted and they've been ignored for a long time, but check out this cherry tree. It's just absolutely incredible. And there's so much potential in this property that they're wanting to convert to a permaculture arrangement. Um, there's tons of existing shedding. Um, it's got incredible Riesling vines that are already being cultivated. So there's huge potential in this place and it was lovely to visit. The fruit on this hunter apricot is coming in so beautifully at the moment and just ripening up to a treat. We've had a lot of fungal infection unfortunately in a lot of the fruit. A lot, it's still edible though, no problem at all. Still tastes great. I tell you what, they're absolutely small but geez they're good. Mm. I'm done apricot chicken, here we come. The Golden Queen peaches are coming in slowly, but they always do, they're the last peaches of the season. If you're not familiar with them, they're your classic golden tinned peach that you probably had when you were a kid. I love them for their firmness, um, and particularly their flavor, which I actually think is quite unique for a peach. One of the sad decisions we've had to make here in the patch is um, abandoning the red dragon carrot that we've had for such a long time. Over the years, basically the, the actual uh, root has become a bit tougher every year to the point where now you can sort of grate part of it off, but they're just no good. So not everything succeeds. It's a shame because beautiful flowers you know, really ready to go. But, you know, need to find something else. First tomatoes are coming in. These are Tommy toes. Look at the color on them. Absolutely beautiful. Around the garden in tomato beds, I've tried underplanting with sweet potato this year, just basically to help protect the soil for the tomato in addition to mulch, but just to see whether a little bit of companion planting might actually be beneficial in this situation. Don't know, so we'll keep trying. So in the evening I just sort of carried on. Um, a lot of our kidney beans are ready to go now and um, it's great. And the, the cavatini mix you saw earlier in the video um, was made from some of these beans. So thanks for watching and um, see you next time.